Hello, welcome to my video. This is the second part of a two-part series, so if you haven't watched the first part already and are interested, you definitely should. This is a Kyauhaba storyline that does not take place in the canon Haikyuu universe. Please note that there are topics surrounding financial struggle and sexual relations, though quite implicit. Also, a friendly warning, this video does contain cursing. As always, I do hope you enjoy. Now on to the video. In which Kayatani begins to burst at the seams with his feelings. Ugh. Kayatani huffs for the tenth time that hour as he aggressively sweeps at the floor of the chemistry laboratories, furrowing his brows and gripping the broomstick so tightly it feels as though it'll snap at any second. It's not because he's in his feelings about anything, though. He's just passionate about cleaning up the lab. He's not thinking about the fireworks show. He's definitely not thinking about Yahaba, that stupid, idiotically cute, beautiful, unbearably soft son of a... Um. Kayatani whips his head upward to look at Watari. Or, glare at him, more likely, as Watari visibly flinches and takes a small step back from his place beside the counter nearest to Kayatani. It only makes Kayatani's eyebrows scrunch further. What? Well, you've been sweeping the same spot for five minutes now. And, you keep groaning like an old man with back problems. What's wrong? Kayatani grumbles. Nothing. Watari's lips stretch into an awkward smile, and he chuckles uncomfortably. Okay. Well, you can always talk about it with me, that is, if something were the matter. Dot dot dot. A beat passes before Kayatani sighs deeply. He places the broom to lean against a workbench, then hops onto the bench himself. Once he's sat atop it, he slouches with a grumble. Watari abandons the counter to walk toward Kayatani. He hoists himself onto the workbench with an oof, then settles beside Kayatani. Are you sure nothing's wrong? Kayatani runs a hand over his face with another sigh. That, friend I told you about. Oh, the one with a, special friend? Yahaba's sugar daddy being a, special friend? Kayatani shivers slightly at the thought. Yeah, that one. I talked to them about how I was, feeling, like you said I should. And we went out to a fireworks show later that day. Hey, that's great. Yeah, but. Heat rushes to Kayatani's cheeks as he recalls the night. Yahaba's proximity, those pretty, half-lidded eyes, the pounding in his chest, the dizziness, how close their lips were too. Kayatani covers his face with both hands and groans loudly. Damn, it's too embarrassing. Oh, well, are you blushing right now? I've never seen you turn that color before. Kayatani cringes at the lilt in Watari's voice. Just shut up. What exactly happened between you two? What did I just say? Kayatani senpei, just tell me. Dot dot dot. Kayatani drops his hands from his face but makes sure not to look Watari in the eye, knowing his face is shamefully beat red. We almost kissed. You almost what? Really? Watari gasps quietly. Oh, I get it now. You felt more than replaced as just a friend, didn't you? You felt replaced as someone you... Watari, screw off. Kayatani senpei, do you have a crush on this person? Kayatani scoffs and turns his head away from Watari entirely, though he's sure his ever-intensifying blush is still visible. Like hell I'd have a crush on that dumbass. Emptily insulting them to convince me otherwise won't work here. It's good that the feelings are mutual, right? Kayatani hums and scratches his head. They don't feel that way about me. What? But the both of you almost kissed. Sometimes emotions just run high during some, moments. And they are temporary emotions. As in, they have a half-life of 30 minutes. You'll get it when you're older. You act like we aren't only a year apart. And, like, I have a girlfriend. Well, since, allegedly, neither of you like the other, let's say you both do theoretically. Theoretically, you should just express how you feel and ask them out. Kayatani huffs. Theoretically, it's not that easy when they've still got a sub, special friend in their corner. Ah, you're right. Well, theoretically, if they like you and you two date, the needs they go to their special friend for would be taken care of, no? Kayatani's face grows hotter. I guess. But what if their special friend provides more than I ever could? Watari frowns at that. I'm sure that's not true. You're great, Kayatani-san. Cool, even. And even if you can't, uh, provide the same things, you can provide different things that your crush might even value more. I really doubt that. Hell, with someone like that in their pocket, why would they even like me? Um. Assuming they really don't like you, just get them to like you. That makes Kayatani turn his head to Iwatari's pensive face. What? That's probably the stupidest thing you've ever said. You can't just get someone to like you. Sure you can. If you think good looks alone got me my girlfriend, you'd be wrong. Nobody thought that. One, ouch. Two, not the point. I'm trying to say that doing certain things will help them like you, and, if they already do like you, hopefully like you more. Kayatani falls silent. Throughout his life, he hasn't exactly been someone that people came to like easily, even in the platonic sense. Most of the time, it just came down to whether the person Kayatani was interacting with could tolerate his attitude and all that came with it. Dot dot dot. Was Yahaba's relationship with Kayatani born out of tolerance? Did Yahaba only end up getting this close to Kayatani because Kayatani was just, well, there, or because he genuinely enjoyed Kayatani? 
Kayatani reasons to himself that it's the latter, but the small, vocal part of his irrational brain worries it may very well be the first. But in either case, it wouldn't hurt if Yahaba liked him just a bit more, right? Platonically, of course. And all theoretically. Kayatani must have said the second part aloud, as Watari chuckles. Yeah, sure, sure, all theoretically. Anyway, if you theoretically need guidance, go to WikiHow. Dot dot dot. I take back what I said earlier, because that is the stupidest shit to come out of your mouth. Watari huffs. I'll have you know that it actually helped me a lot when I was trying to win over my girlfriend. So, don't beat it until you try it. Watari grins. Theoretically, of course. Kayatani scowls and hops off the bench. I'm out. What? Why? Stupidity is contagious. Dude, you haven't even finished sweeping. Kayatani grabs his backpack from the adjacent workbench and begins walking toward the lab exit. I'll make it up to you sometime. Also, don't forget to lock the door. You know Sensei hates it when we forget. Without sparing Watari a glance, Kayatani waves. See ya. With that, Kayatani opens the door, then slams it, and Watari's immediate protests behind him. Wiki how? Huh? Kayatani scoffs. How desperate would he have to be to turn to a website like that? He knows Yahaba. So he doesn't need some silly, second-rate advice to get Yahaba to like him, or, like him more. Theoretically, of course. How to get the boy you like to like you back. The title of the WikiHow article Kayatani has pulled up on his phone glares at him in a bold, black font. For some reason, it feels like he's being ridiculed, as though the title is saying, you said you wouldn't be here, but you are, you desperate, sad excuse of a man. But Kayatani isn't desperate. No, he's just perusing this article as he goes up the elevator of his apartment building to try to understand what Watari was hyping up. As he exits the elevator and walks down a hallway, Kayatani reads the first piece of advice. Be confident and self-assured whenever you're around him. Kayatani scoffs. His goldfish from elementary school could have given him less generic advice. Kayatani skims through the description following the subtitle, settling on the last line as he finds his apartment door. Don't be afraid to make eye contact and smile at him. Kayatani frowns as he reaches up to press his fingers onto the center of his forehead, smoothing out the creases formed by his forever furrowed brows. Would he be attractive to Yahaba if he smiled more? Kayatani knows Yahaba's smile is one of the only sights that could make his heart flutter. Perhaps smiles are generally attractive? And Kayatani always does a whole lot of eye-rolling, blinking, squinting, and gaze-averting whenever he talks to Yahaba. Maybe he could give greater intentional eye contact a try. Kayatani shakes his head and scoffs. Why in the world was he actually considering WikiHow advice to this extent? Kayatani mutters under his breath as he fiddles with his keys. I guess stupidity is contagious. Kayatani opens the door and enters the Jenkin, absent-mindedly saying I'm home and he begins to take off his shoes. To his surprise, he gets a reply. Welcome home. Yahaba? Kayatani steps out of the Jenkin and sees Yahaba at the stove in their kitchen, stirring the contents in a huge skillet as the smell of fried rice wafted in the air. Yahaba glances back to give Kayatani a small smile. Hey. It's enough to make Kayatani's heart jump a little. Hey. I didn't think you'd be home until tonight. Well, my literature class ended early today, so I decided to come back for a quick home-cooked meal instead of buying something. I made enough for you too, by the way. Oh. Kayatani walks over to the counter beside the stove and leans on it slightly to look right into Yahaba's eyes. Yahaba meets his gaze with a raised eyebrow. What? Kayatani grins. Nothing. Just wanted to make sure I was looking at the chef as I thanked them. Yahaba visibly gulps, and Kayatani swears that his cheeks are the slightest bit rosy. When Yahaba speaks, his voice is a bit quiet. It's not a big deal. Kayatani's grin widens. Wait. He just did something on par with the advice from the WikiHow article. And, Yahaba seems flustered by it. So, it worked? The advice is legit? Why are you staring at me? Ah, uh, sorry, just thinking. I'm gonna go put my backpack in my room. Ah, uh, you go do that. The food will be ready soon. Kayatani nods, hitching his backpack a bit higher on his shoulder as he speeds toward his bedroom. Once he's inside, he tosses his backpack aside. Kayatani shuts the door behind him and comically looks around the room as if someone would really be there to witness his ridiculousness, then pulls out his phone again to read the WikiHow article. Ask him open-ended questions to get to know him better. Kayatani already knows Yahaba pretty well. Or, at least he thinks he does. Dot dot dot. There's always more to know, right? Kayatani nods to himself, then, after a deep breath, exits his room. As he steps closer to the kitchen, he sees Yahaba plating their food on the counter. Sitting beside their plates is a slender, pale-colored book Kayatani hadn't noticed before. Oh, is that the book you're reading in your lit class? Nah, I'm just reading it myself. Well, for the third time. PFFT. At that point, you know what's going to happen before it does. Why do you like the book so much? Well, Yahaba looks up from the plates to look Kayatani in the eye. It's less about what happens than what it means. Every time I read the book, I notice nuances and discover new meanings within the lines. I feel like the story is less about action and more about the emotions people hold toward the events that happen. There's more to uncover within the ways we feel than the ways we act. Feelings guide us more than we'd like to think, and the book's ambiguity and dialogue shows just how unique each of our characters and emotions really is. 
It's hard to understand people, but I think part of the job of people who write is to try. Kayatani's eyes widen. That. Yahaba laughs lightly. Hey, that response was a lot more than you bargained for, huh? No, I just didn't realize you cared about that kind of stuff. And now I know another reason you like literature so much. That's just, really cool to me. And it makes me like you a bit more, Kayatani thinks. Platonically, of course, he tells himself. Yahaba looks away, and his face starts to resemble his strawberry-colored sweatshirt. Maybe if you were a bit more thoughtful of things in life, you wouldn't be so amazed. Says you. Iniho, I'll bring the plates to the table. Can you get us some sweet tea? Kayatani waves Yahaba off, and once Yahaba has picked up the plates and turned his back to Kayatani, Kayatani does a silent fist pump. That blush on Yahaba's face? Kayatani is on fire. Kayatani pulls out his phone once more to view the WikiHow article. Compliment him about his personality, intelligence, and looks. Break the touch barrier to see how he responds. Kayatani's feeling a little confident. What if he pulls a combo? Kayatani, I'm going to be married with two dogs by the time you bring the tea. Be patient. Just hurry up. Kayatani opens the fridge, which is a lot fuller these days thanks to the sugar daddy, and pulls out a container of sweet tea. He quickly grabs two containers, fills them with ice and tea, then brings them over to the dining table. A new, modern dining table, Kayatani reminds himself. Again, thanks to the sugar daddy. Kayatani scrunches his nose. So what if the guy's rich? He won't lose to some geezer. Not now, not tomorrow, not. Why do you look like you just smelled something nasty? Sit down. Kayatani blinks, then notices Yahaba looking at him with concern. You okay? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm fine, no worries. Kayatani takes his seat across from Yahaba and sets a glass of tea in front of them both. Finally, Yahaba claps his hands together, and Kayatani follows suit. Thank you for the meal. Thank you for the meal. As they begin to eat, Yahaba's eyes are focused on his plate. But Kayatani's eyes are right on Yahaba, trying to pick out one part of him to compliment. The task deems difficult, though, as all of Yahaba feels, complimentable. Yahaba must feel Kayatani's eyes on him, as he slowly looks up with a confused smile. Why are you looking at me so much today? Am I that cute or something? You are. Wah. Yahaba starts to cough, grabbing his glass to take swigs of tea. Kayatani isn't doing much better with a hand covering the bottom half of his face and his cheeks so hot he's afraid he'll suffer from a heat stroke. You are. Kayatani said that too quickly and too proudly. Still, he's going to try to save his ass if he can help it. Kayatani reaches across the table to rest his hand on Yahaba's wrist. Yahaba stiffens but doesn't pull away, so Kayatani continues. I spoke kinda quickly. Dot dot dot. And stupidly. I was just thinking that your sweater really compliments your hair. It's nice. Oh. Yahaba smiles shyly. Thanks. Tanukiyu san said the same thing when I wore it a couple of weeks ago, actually. He's picking me up after my evening class to go out to eat, so I decided to wear it for him. Kayatani wants to scream. Without even knowing it, this old man was making his life far too difficult. Oh. Why are you frowning? Is it because I brought up Tanukiyo san Kayatani mumbles. Do you really enjoy being with him? Do you, like him? Well, of course I like him. All the dates and phone calls and whatnot, I wouldn't be able to tolerate it if I didn't like him. But I don't like him romantically, if that's what you meant. He's way too old, and our relationship is mostly transactional. But you know, I think I like him because he reminds me of you. Dot dot dot. What? Don't look so offended. It's not in a weird way. Yahaba clasps Kayatani's hand and examines their interlaced fingers. He has a hard exterior, but he's secretly caring and mushy if you know which buttons to press. He's also protective and reliable like you. And you both are always tough. Some people hate guys that always have to be tough, but I actually really like it. Sometimes I feel weak, so I really value being able to turn to someone strong when I'm feeling like that. Yahaba turns his gaze on Kayatani. You've got all the qualities of an ideal man, Kayatani. If you lost the attitude, you'd be perfect. Kayatani feels his cheeks warm up, and he feels a little stupid. He didn't need wikiHow bullshit. Yahaba already found parts about Kayatani that he liked, and he didn't seem to need anything more to feel differently about Kayatani. Platonically, theoretically, or otherwise. Iwa-chan, have you been doing more squats lately? Your butt looks amazing from back here. Jesus Christ. Kayatani is standing in line for the concession stand at the movie theater with his co-workers. Matsuko had suggested it as a team bonding activity. To Kayatani, it seemed more like punishment. Aikora, you're not wrong, but please, this is a family-friendly place. Practice public decency. This is why I hate when you stand behind me. Iwazumi grabs Aikora's hand and pulls him against his side. There. Kayatani sees Aikora smirk. You just wanted to be closer to me. SHH, don't let the whole theater know. Respectfully, please stop this before I puke. Aikora and Iwachan stop flirting for five minutes challenge. Failed. Aikora sticks his tongue out at Kayatani and Matsukura. Aikora, we're not five. Keep your tongue in your mouth. Oh. But I thought you liked when I use my tongue. I'm going to be sick. I'm done. 
Diotony kneels down to step under the rope barrier demarcating the line. Call me when you get the food. Wait. Kayatani kun Don't leave me. Kayatani ignores Matsuko as he shoves his hands in his pockets and walks away from the concession stand. He takes a walk around the theater while looking at the large posters advertising upcoming movies. When he gets bored with that after a little while, he heads to the small arcade near the front of the theater. There are mostly children there, running around wildly as their parents either try to keep up with them or quiet them. However, as he steps closer, Kayatani sees an unmistakable figure standing at the claw machine. Yahaba? Yahaba jumps and snaps his head around with a look of shock on his face. Kayatani? What are you doing here? I should be asking you that. Aren't you supposed to be working right now? I'm playing hooky today. I did horribly on my test earlier and needed some quick cheering up, so I came to watch a movie. Ah. Yeah, I'm waiting for Tanukiyo san to pick me up. He wanted to go shopping with me. By shopping with you, you mean he wants to buy you a bunch of expensive clothes. Same difference. Kayatani tries not to appear upset. HMPH. What about you? Why are you here? I'm here hanging out with my idiot co-workers. You should introduce me to them sometime. Maybe, but not today. I can't stand them right now. Hey, all right. Well, assuming you'll be around for a little while, care to help me with this thing? Yahaba points to a seafoam green stuffed bunny through the glass of the claw machine. I've spent a good ten bucks on it already and can't seem to get it. Well, you're asking the right person. Kayatani cracks his knuckles and nudges Yahaba to move away from the machine. Once Yahaba steps to the side, Kayatani grabs the joystick and levels his gaze with the claw. With his tongue stuck out in concentration, Kayatani carefully maneuvers the claw until it is set perfectly above the stuffed bunny. He clicks the red button beside the joystick, and the claw drops down, latching onto the stuffed animal. As the claw rises, the stuffed bunny teeters, but it still remains in the grasp of the claw. Oh, I think you've actually got it. See? It's almost two. Before Kayatani can finish his sentence, the stuffed animal falls from the claw just before the claw can drop it down the chute. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Yahaba groans. Ah, uh, you were so close. No problem, that was just a warm-up. Aha. Uh -huh. Kayatani whips out his wallet and inserts a bill into the machine. I'll be sure to get it this time. He didn't get it that time, unfortunately. Or the time after that, or the one after that. Ten minutes and too much money spent later, Kayatani is slamming his fist on the claw machine while Yahaba slides a yearning hand down the glass. I guess you and I weren't meant to be, Mrs. Bunny. I don't get it. How have I not gotten it yet? Don't sweat it, you know these things are rigged. Kayatani grunts. I'm getting that bunny. Kayatani opens his wallet once again and pulls out his last bill. With a deep breath, he puts it into the machine, then grabs onto the joystick. This is it. I believe in you. Quickly yet meticulously, Kayatani gets the claw over the stuffed bunny once again. After waiting for the claw to stop rocking, he presses the red button, and his eyes watch the claw drop and grab the bunny. The bunny hangs from the claw from the edge of its ear, wavering dangerously as the claw nears the chute. Kayatani hears Yahaba suck in a breath beside him. Come on, come on. Then, the bunny begins to slip from the claw. But not before the claw fully releases it down the chute. Yahaba gasps, then drops to the ground to fish the stuffed animal out of the prize slot. When Yahaba pulls out the bunny, Kayatani sees a wide grin spread across his face. Mrs. Bunny. Yahaba pulls the bunny to his chest, then leaps up to wrap an arm around Kayatani's neck. You did it. It took you, like, 15 minutes, but you did it. Kayatani clicks his tongue. Don't complain about how long it took, or I'll rip its head off. Hey. I'm not complaining, I'm just observing. You chemists do that a lot, right? Kayatani sighs but pats Yahaba's back, his way of returning the embrace. Yeah, yeah. Yahaba releases Kayatani and looks at him with a soft smile. The bunny is even more special because you got it for me. Kayatani scoffs, but he can already feel himself heating up. Why are you getting so sentimental over some stuffed animal? Because, look at her. Yahaba waves the bunny in Kayatani's face, who pushes it away with a hiss. Get that shit out of my face. SHH, language, there are children around. Whatever. PFFT. Kayatani, sometimes, you really are a gift from above. Is that why you were jealous of Tsukishima over me? Yahaba's eyes widen, as does Kayatani's own. Shoot. Why'd he say that? Why'd he have to always go and do something to ruin a perfectly good moment? Hey, I was hoping we'd forget that conversation never happened, but that was wishful thinking. Huh? Sorry, I, I don't know why I said that. I shouldn't have. No, it's fine. And, yes, that helped out with my jealousy, among other things. Kayatani notices the light pink on Yahaba's cheeks. You're not half bad, Kayatani. You're not as hard to fall for as you think. Kayatani inhales sharply, his heart stuttering. Was Yahaba referring to Tsukishima, or himself? Anyway, Tanukiyo-san has been outside for five minutes now. I shouldn't keep him waiting any longer. What? Why didn't you say something sooner? Because I was having fun with you. Yahaba winks and pats Kayatani's arm. Enjoy the movie. With that, Yahaba waves and starts to make his way to the exit of the theater. Kayatani wants to grab onto him, call after him. Tell him not to leave with that old man. Tell him to stay for reasons Kayatani wouldn't be able to explain. 
Yahaba makes Kayatani forget how to feel like himself, and Kayatani is still deciding whether he loves it or hates it. Not wanting to think about it much longer, Kayatani sighs and turns on his heel to walk back over to the concession stand. He sees Matsukura, Oikura, and Iwazumi standing near it, each carrying food or drinks in their arms. Oh, Mad Dog Chan. Showed up right on time, I was just about to call you. The previews are probably going to end soon, so we should go find our seats. Need help with the food? Duh. Oikura shoves the nachos and gummy worms he's holding into Kayatani's arms. He then plucks a drink from Matsukura's hand and takes a sip from it. Ah, refreshing. You bitch. Let's get going, Iwa-chan. As Oikura turns around and begins to walk away with Iwazumi, he wraps an arm around Iwazumi's shoulders and leans in close to his face. We should just make out during the movie and watch it later on so today. That'd be a waste of our money. And there's going to be people around us, you know. Fine. Give me kisses throughout, though. HM. Only if you're good. As the two walk further away, Kayatani hears less and less of their conversation, for the better, he decides. Still. What the actual? Don't. Kayatani turns to look at Matsukura, whose expression can only be described as desolate. Don't even question it. Matsukura shakes his head, mumbling something about public decency. When he's done, he looks at Kayatani. Where were you, anyway? You walked back over to us looking kind of, stupefied. Kayatani blushes. That's none of your business. Um, okay. Matsukura sighs. Weird. You guys are weird. I'm ready to watch this movie. I need a distraction from all of you. Matsukura begins to walk away, and Kayatani trails a bit behind. Yeah, a distraction sounds good to Kayatani, too. I'm so damn screwed. Kayatani is rampaging about the apartment as he searches for his protractor. His bedroom and the living room look as though a tornado recently passed through, and he's late enough to class that he won't make it in time even if he sprints, but he knows he'll look like a dumbass during the lesson today if he doesn't find that protractor. Kayatani checks his bedroom for the nth time and once again shoves his hand between the couch cushions like a toddler looking for a three-week-old chip to snack on. Alas, he can't find that stupid little tool. Where is it? Where is it? Kayatani's eyes land on Yahaba's bedroom door, and suddenly, he remembers. Yahaba borrowed his protractor a couple of days ago for some project, and Kayatani supposes Yahaba forgot to put it back on Kayatani's desk as requested. With that revelation, Kayatani rushes over to Yahaba's room and throws the door open. Yahaba, where's my protractor? I really need it for. What Kayatani sees makes him stop in his tracks, his jaw all but dropping to the floor. Yahaba is standing with his back arched in front of his body-length mirror, his phone held up to it as though to take a photo. His body is turned to Kayatani now, frozen, his face colored with an expression akin to that of a deer caught in bright headlights. He's wearing a freshly ironed police hat, and the tie around his neck with a faux police badge on it is the only thing covering his smooth, lean upper body. His lower half would be bare if not for the tight, black leather speedo covering his crotch, and... Yahaba squeaks and drops his phone to cover his body with both hands. D don't look at me. Kayatani whips his head to the side and shuts his eyes as heat begins to creep onto his face, knowing this sight will be forever ingrained into his filthy mind. God, he wants to die. Yeah, you keep your eyes shut. Wait a minute. Kayatani hears some rustling and huffing. About a minute later, Yahaba speaks up again. All right, you can open them. Kayatani opens his eyes and cautiously turns his head to look at Yahaba, who is now wearing a white robe that presumably covers his outfit. His hair is noticeably a bit messy, and seeing the cop hat now sitting quietly at the edge of Yahaba's bed makes Kayatani blush even harder. Yahaba's gaze shifts toward where Kayatani is looking and, once seemingly realizing that Kayatani was looking at the hat, blushes harder, as well. You opening my package and seeing the lingerie was bad enough. Having you see me wear it? Yahaba rubs his hands over his face. This is so fucking humiliating. What happened to knocking? We never knock. Dot dot dot. Yahaba sighs. Fine, you have a point. He drops his hands from his face. I don't even want to look at you right now. Sorry. It's okay. Well, it's not okay at all. That was for Tanukiyo san's eyes and his eyes only. Kayatani really throws up a little in his mouth. But it was an honest mistake. Now I know to do that kind of stuff when you're not home. What in the world did you need from me, anyway? I needed my protractor. For a class. Dot dot dot. Yahaba silently walks over to his desk, grabs the protractor, and shoves it into Kayatani's hands. Here, sorry I didn't return it sooner. Then, Yahaba starts pushing Kayatani out his bedroom door. Yahaba. I know this is cliche, but it's me, not you. I'm too ashamed to see you right now. Wait. Just as Yahaba is about to shut the door, Kayatani reaches out an arm. Don't be ashamed. Things don't have to get awkward. It's, it's just me all right. Yahaba gently pushes Kayatani's arm down. The problem is literally that it's you. Before he can question further, Yahaba slams the door, leaving Kayatani shocked, flustered, and confused. Yahaba was getting vaguer with his language by the day. Worse than that, the sight of Yahaba in front of the mirror in that damn lingerie is etched into Kayatani's brain folds. And, he can't help but feel a little grossed out knowing Yahaba was sending those photos to his sugar daddy. A small part of him, much to Kayatani's distress, can't help but wonder if Yahaba would wear something so revealing for any lover. And, what if Kayatani were that love? No. 
Diotony slaps his cheeks with both hands. He's being gross. Really gross. Dot dot dot. But he's only a man. He won't be able to get this out of his head, even if he tries. And maybe he likes it that way. Diotony is hovering over the back of the couch to look at Yahaba, who was laying down while reading a book. It had been two days since the lingerie incident, and things were weird as ever between the two. Yahaba, clearly succumbing to his great embarrassment, had been masterfully dodging Kayatani. But Kayatani, not wanting this to go on any longer, decided to nip the situation in the bud. Hey, Yahaba. Yahaba glances up from his book. Um? I thought I said that things don't have to get awkward. Yahaba sighs and rests the book on his chest. Just because you say it doesn't have to doesn't mean it won't. You're causing that all by yourself. Let's just get past that, all right. I can't even remember what you looked like anymore. That was a lie, obviously. The image flashed in Kayatani's mind every time he saw Yahaba. It even showed up in a particularly interesting dream last night. But Yahaba doesn't need to know all that. I feel like you're bullshitting so I don't feel as bad. Is it working? Yahaba turns his head away and grumbles. A little. I'm still just really embarrassed about the situation. That's fair. Let's, uh, make new memories to replace that one. Yahaba turns his head to look at Kayatani again with a questioning look. What are you proposing? Let's go get some boba. Yahaba's face lights up. Boba? You should have led with that. Kayatani snorts. Too easy. All right, let's go now, then. Barely ten minutes later, the two are strolling down the sidewalk toward the boba tea shop near their apartment building. Yahaba whistles as he walks, almost skipping with that pep in his step, and Kayatani can't help but grin. You're acting like a kid going to the candy store for the first time. It's boba. Is this not an appropriate reaction? You act like you don't buy it every other week. And it'd be every other day if it weren't so unhealthy. PFFT. Well, at least you're aware that. A ringtone cuts through the conversation. Kayatani feels a vibration in his hand and looks down to read the caller it displayed on his phone screen. Oh, it's Shinji-kun. Shinji-kun? Jeez, he bothers you on the weekends, too? Kayatani shoots Yahaba glare. For the millionth time, we are friends. I'll answer this really quickly, it won't take long. Kayatani answers the call, then clicks another button to place it on speaker. Hey. Hi, Kayatani senpei How are you? I'm alright, I'm out grabbing some boba with my roommate. Oh, cool. How are you? I'm good. Well, not right now, to be honest. I lost some of the data from the last Chen lab, can you send me yours? Um, dunno, that sounds like academic dishonesty to me. Sensei's last remaining black hair strands would probably turn grey if she heard one of her top students saying this. Kayatani senpei come on. Kayatani begins to laugh. But when he sees the pout on Yahaba's face from the corner of his eye, he quiets down and clears his throat. Okay, okay, I'll send the lab stuff later. Remind me tomorrow morning if I forget. Thank you, bye. Kayatani ends the call, then narrows his eyes at Yahaba. What? Is. Your. Issue? Kayatani senpei Really? Sounds like he's trying to butter you up. To be fair, I've told him to stop calling me that, but he is my junior, so. Kayatani shrugs. It's just not a big deal, don't know why you're bitching about it. In fact, I don't know why you have something against Shinji-kun. I don't actually have a problem with him, I'm just a bit wary of him. But why? He's a good kid who hasn't done a thing to you. I think he likes you, Kayatani. Kayatani waves his hands around in exasperation. Girlfriend. He has a girlfriend. And even if he does like me, what's it to you? You're acting like a protective boyfriend as if you don't have a sugar daddy, who you wear tacky party city lingerie for, that's old enough to have fought in the Russo-Japanese war as your booty call. Dot dot dot. Yahaba stops walking and grabs Kayatani's arm. Where the hell did all that come from? Kayatani sucks his teeth. You're not the only one who's wary. But your wariness is uncalled for. The last time you acted like this was when. When he and Tsukishima first got together. Dot dot dot. Oh. Yahaba, are you, jealous? Yahaba blinks rapidly, then quickly averts his gaze. I think you're projecting. You've been jealous of Tanukiyo-san since day one. What? I'm not jealous of Taoki-san. Not his name. Yahaba looks back at Kayatani, right into his eyes. And you definitely have been jealous. Ha. Huh. Why would I be jealous? Yahaba makes a strangled noise as he searches Kayatani's eyes. Then why else would you bring the sugar daddy into the conversation when he doesn't need to be brought into it? And why is it that the last time I accused you of being jealous, you threw a fit but then almost kissed me? Kayatani feels himself flush, and he grunts in embarrassment. You're bringing that up? I am. Yahaba tilts his head and brushes his hand against Kayatani's hand. I'm tired of mixed signals. I need to know. Yahaba doesn't share what exactly he needs to know, but Kayatani's sure he has a good idea. Kayatani doesn't like this at all. Not the way that Yahaba is turning him into putty in the middle of the sidewalk. Not the way Yahaba gazes so affectionately at Kayatani that it makes his chest hurt. Not the way that Kayatani knows that if he doesn't tell the truth now, he very well never will. Dot dot dot. Whatever you're thinking. You're probably right. Kayatani grasps Yahaba's hand, and he feels his cheeks warm up. But it feels like I've already lost to Tanukiyo-san. 
Yahaba smiles and squeezes Kayatani's hand. You finally got his name right. Buzz off. PFFT. But, lose to him? He was never competition, idiot. But he has money. He helps us live better than I could. You're one of the main reasons I live this happily, though. But if I were to ask you to break things off with him, you'd hesitate, wouldn't you? Yahaba goes rigid. You know why, though. I do. Do you understand it? I do, but I can't accept it. Like, I really want to kiss you right now, but I can't knowing he probably kissed you a couple of days ago. Kayatani. What we had before he came along wasn't enough. Don't say it like that. You made it okay, Kayatani. Not okay enough, clearly. Though neither of them says it explicitly, the feelings they have toward each other are mutual. And yet. What is it that Yahaba had said? There's more to uncover within the ways we feel than the ways we act. Though the core of the emotions they are oozing right now is the same, the rest of the feelings they hold are in conflict. Sure, Yahaba is still being vague. Yet Kayatani is, too, and the vagueness suddenly breeds clarity. Kayatani isn't the only one here struggling with his emotions. And he isn't the only one struggling even more because of a certain figure in Yahaba's life. Kayatani sighs. We're not going to figure this out today. Yeah. Let's just get the boba and talk about this again some other time. Yahaba squeezes Kayatani's hand again. I could wait a little while longer. Yeah, that sugar daddy is still ruining Kayatani's life. But maybe, just maybe, something good can come out of this because of him. When I